覧ください新しい時代の幕開けです Imagine this You head to your kitchen Fill a jug with water from the tap Pour it into your car's tank And you're ready to hit the road for a cross-country trip Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, Toyota, a name often linked with innovation and eco-friendly solutions, is on the brink of turning that into reality with their groundbreaking water engine. But can a vehicle really run on just water? No gasoline, no electricity. Stick around as we dive into this game-changing development and uncover what Toyota has to reveal about this futuristic technology. When it comes to the history of water-powered engines, they've long been a dream for the car industry. The potential benefits over traditional engines and even electric vehicles are huge. Yet, despite numerous attempts to make water engines a reliable option for daily use, success has remained elusive. And that's exactly where Toyota plans to change the game. With their new water engine, they're stepping in where others have struggled. Unlike the earlier efforts that often happened in small workshops with tight budgets, Toyota's extensive R&D resources allow them to push the boundaries and test this engine in every possible scenario. How does Toyota's water engine actually work? This revolutionary engine breaks free from conventional fuel technologies by using real-time electrolysis to sustain itself. Unlike hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, which rely on bulky, high-pressure storage tanks, this engine uses a simple water tank equipped with electrodes. When high voltages are applied, the water is split instantly into its core components, hydrogen and oxygen. This process happens on the spot, doing away with the need for external hydrogen storage. The result? A sleek, compact design that's both lightweight and efficient. Once the hydrogen is separated, it flows into the combustion chamber, where it burns much like compressed natural gas. What's most impressive is that this engine is entirely self-contained. No need for complex refueling stations or additional storage systems. The engine itself functions similarly to an HHO generator, but is refined for practical, everyday use. It's almost identical to the hydrogen combustion engine in Toyota's GR Yaris H2, with one major difference. Instead of using pre-processed hydrogen stored in a tank, it creates its own by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen on demand. And what's left? Just harmless water vapor. By relying on electrolysis, the engine avoids the need for heavy, armored tanks required in traditional hydrogen-powered vehicles, making it a game-changer in design and practicality. Hydrogen on its own is notoriously difficult to contain, and that's where the journey begins for Toyota's water engine. The process of powering the vehicle shares a key similarity with hydrogen combustion engines. Once hydrogen is separated from oxygen, it's directed to the engine where it combusts, much like compressed natural gas. But that's just the start. To handle hydrogen's volatile nature, several adaptations are necessary. The fuel injectors must be adjusted for compressed gas, while the cylinder heads, pistons and valves need extra reinforcement due to hydrogen's highly combustible nature. Its explosive force demands components built for greater strength. What's fascinating about this system is the electrolysis process. The technology that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen can be powered by renewable energy sources like solar or wind. This gives the system a sustainability edge. And here's where it gets even more interesting. While electric cars are often praised as zero-emission vehicles, their reliance on lithium-ion batteries comes with hidden costs. The production and disposal of these batteries can take a heavy toll on the environment and consume massive resources. Toyota's water-powered car completely sidesteps these challenges. According to Toyota's Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer, Hiroki Nakajima, this groundbreaking technology isn't just another innovation, 
it's a bold step forward that could transform the future of transportation. Toyota's innovative hydrogen fuel cell cars work by creating electricity through a chemical reaction between hydrogen stored in the car and oxygen from the air. But the real game changer here is their new water engine system, which introduces a critical component known as an electrolyzer. This clever addition not only makes the process efficient and safe, but it also requires minimal energy, and best of all, there's no harmful byproduct. Unlike traditional hydrogen powered vehicles that rely on bulky, heavy tanks to store hydrogen, this system produces hydrogen on demand. That means the car is lighter, more efficient, and better at utilizing hydrogen fuel. However, to make this all work, some parts of the car's engine need to be redesigned. The fuel injectors, which deliver fuel into the engine, have to be modified to spray hydrogen properly. And that's not all. The engine block and cylinder head must be downsized to handle the higher pressure of hydrogen fuel. Even small components like the valves and spark plugs require custom adjustments to ensure the engine runs smoothly and safely. We'll dive deeper into the mechanics of how this process works in a bit, but here's what's key. Toyota's water engine system outperforms other hydrogen-based motors, mainly because water is easier and cheaper to store than hydrogen. Hydrogen, being a gas, needs special high-pressure tanks that are heavy, expensive and prone to leaks, making them a potential safety hazard. Water, on the other hand, is far easier to store. It doesn't require specialized tanks or high pressure, which not only makes it safer, but also more practical. This makes the water engine versatile, suitable for everything from compact cars to heavy trucks and even power plants. Its simplicity, safety and ability to cut our dependence on fossil fuels make it a clear winner. Not only does it help reduce harmful emissions, but it's also a more sustainable option for both transportation and energy production. Yet here's something that may surprise you. This concept of running a car on water isn't as original as you might think. Before Toyota made headlines with its revolutionary water engine, there were others who tried to walk that ambitious path. And some of the claims they made, absolutely mind-blowing. In 2008, a Japanese company called Genepax shook the world by announcing they had developed a car that could supposedly run on water instead of traditional fuels like gasoline or diesel. It was a huge promise, cheaper, greener energy that could change the game. Genepax claimed their car worked by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen, using hydrogen as fuel. But there was a catch. Experts soon discovered that the system wasn't entirely reliant on water. It also required something called metal hydride, which meant the car wasn't truly powered by water alone. The company never offered solid scientific evidence, and skepticism quickly spread. Scientists pointed out that breaking down water molecules takes an enormous amount of energy, making it impossible to draw power solely from water without an external boost. This wasn't the first time such claims had been met with doubt. Back in the 1980s, a man named Stanley Allen Meyer boasted about creating a dune buggy that ran on water, but like Genepax, he never backed up his claims. In fact, Meyer was later convicted of fraud in 1996, so when Genepax's announcement came along, people weren't entirely surprised when it fizzled out. But if there's one thing this history shows, it's that the quest for cleaner energy isn't going away anytime soon. While those early efforts might not have worked, they set the stage for real innovation. Toyota, for example, has already made waves with its hydrogen-powered car, the Mirai. It's proof that sustainable transportation is not just a distant dream, but a reality in the making. And Toyota's work suggests the best is yet to come.
First off, it's nearly zero emissions, a game changer when compared to traditional combustion engines. Think about electric vehicles. This engine matches their eco-friendly nature, but takes convenience to a whole new level. Forget plugging in, forget specialized fuel. It's all about water. As long as you have access to diluted water, you're good to go. And the best part, it'll cost almost nothing to refuel. Imagine a world where oil extraction dwindles because this engine goes mainstream. The fossil fuel industry might only be relevant for heavy machinery or large-scale power plants. But there's more. We're talking about no need for rare metals, which are currently extracted in ways that devastate the environment, polluting water sources, ruining soil, and turning entire areas uninhabitable. Now, if we compare water engines to hydrogen-powered vehicles or fuel cell electric cars, the difference is staggering. Hydrogen engines are marketed as zero emissions, but storing hydrogen is an expensive, delicate process. Water, on the other hand, is far simpler to store. No need for high-tech containers or complicated conditions. Just a plastic container will do. Plus, hydrogen is tricky. It's a gas that can leak easily if something's off with the tank. That means reinforced tanks, constant monitoring and higher costs. Water tanks? Much simpler. And don't forget, hydrogen storage outside of the vehicle is another challenge, requiring precise temperatures and costly setups. Water. Buy it at the store or even make it at home if you know your chemistry. Hydrogen's expense and logistical issues are the reasons it hasn't taken off and likely never will. Hydrogen is expensive to produce and store, which leads to higher costs for consumers. It makes us wonder, why would anyone choose hydrogen cars when they're more costly to buy and maintain than electric or traditional gas-powered vehicles? On paper, they sound great, green, easy to use and efficient, but the real question is, can water engines become a practical, everyday option? Surprisingly, yes. Contrary to what some might think, water-powered engines aren't weak. In fact, they can match, if not exceed, the power of gasoline engines. Theoretically, they can produce up to three times more megajoules of energy compared to a regular internal combustion engine. And here's the kicker, they're much safer. Since no highly flammable fuel is stored in the car, the risk of your vehicle catching fire or exploding is virtually non-existent. The production of these engines is also refreshingly straightforward. Their mechanical design is only slightly more complex than a typical gas engine, yet they're simpler and cheaper to manufacture than electric or fuel cell vehicles. Given their simplicity, they could be a game-changer for developing countries that don't have easy access to oil. Take, for example, an Iranian scientist named Aledin Qasemi. Working in modest conditions, he converted his old Peugeot 405 to run on water. If one man could create such a marvel in his garage, just imagine what a company like Toyota could achieve with the right resources. Not only are water-powered engines easy to produce, but they're also incredibly economical. Take Kasemi's Peugeot 405 as an example. It managed an impressive 30 to 40 miles per gallon on water alone, which is a game changer considering the petrol engine in the same car could never come close to those numbers. Imagine what this means for the future of transportation. With the right engineering, water-powered vehicles could deliver exceptional fuel efficiency far beyond what we've seen with gas-powered or even electric cars. We're talking about the possibility of 80-plus miles per gallon without compromising performance. This could dramatically lower the cost of running a vehicle, potentially making water engines one of the most cost-effective solutions out there. But here's the catch. Despite all this potential, we don't see any major automakers working on water engines. Toyota might be testing the waters, but that leaves us with the question, are water engines really the future? Well, maybe. 
The idea is certainly promising, but it's far from simple. There are a lot of hurdles, and the first is the logistical challenge. While we wouldn't need to completely overhaul existing infrastructure, the technology itself is still in its experimental stages. Most prototypes so far have struggled with reliability, making them impractical for daily use. Then there's the issue of safety. While using water as fuel seems like a fantastic idea, it gets broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, both of which can be highly dangerous if not handled properly. Hydrogen, in particular, is notoriously difficult to contain. Even a small leak could lead to disastrous consequences. And even if Toyota does manage to crack the code and produce a safe, reliable water-powered car, we can't ignore the possibility of pushback. Major players in the oil, lithium and battery industries certainly won't stand by quietly if such a disruptive technology hits the market.